But I want to actually go to Northern Ireland for a moment. Um, among the many catastrophes that could take place if Brexit goes through is an undermining of the Good Friday Agreement. Now, the Good Friday Agreement was established in 1997, and it brought basically a ceasefire to the troubles in Northern Ireland. And this is often framed as a ethnic conflict. It took on an ethnic character, uh, but really the origins are in just pure British colonialism. And plenty of Protestants, even though they might be more likely to identify as, as loyalists to the UK and want North, uh, Northern Ireland to remain part of the UK, they were disenfranchised as well if they were not you know, property owners, as an example. Um, and the IRA is a fascinating political organization, which too uh, certainly engaged in some atrocities. It was a very complicated time politically. And to its immense credit, on the other hand, identified as part of the global liberatory struggles. And then under the leadership of Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams with others, of course, um, including some very important and good leaders on the Protestant side, under the auspices of a Labour Party government, established Good Friday. And the core fulcrum of why Good Friday works is because there isn't a border between Northern, uh, North Ireland, Northern Ireland and Ireland, the Republic of Ireland. You drive through it, you drive, I mean, you're not, it's, it's going from, you know, Massachusetts to Vermont. And this, grew, this deal allowed a sort of a functional one nationhood for those that wanted to join Ireland. And of course, Northern Ireland is still literally part of the UK. Boris Johnson is now making signals because even, you know, Theresa May and others had sort of intimated, look, we're, we're not going to allow a Brexit to threaten this agreement. And the European Union is literally a underwriter of this agreement. They help fund projects, as an example, to even just scrub paramilitary graffiti of guys with baklavas and guns and change it to something about you know, honoring martyrs' legacies or peace moving forward. They are a guarantor. Boris Johnson has started to basically say, like, oh, I'm not going to let that be a threat. I'm not going to let this very delicate peace process be a threat. Now, I don't want to assume the worst case because I think a lot of real progress has happened inside Northern Ireland. And I'll be talking about this and covering this more. But you have a delicate, fraught situation that is the outgrowth of British imperialism that is jeopardized by Brexit on top of everything else. We already saw a journalist get murdered several months ago uh, in Northern Ireland as well. This is a clip from 2015. I want to give you a flavor of some of the leadership. Martin McGuinness was a very important figure. He died a couple years ago. Someone who went from a real genuine hard man to a real genuine peacemaker and was an incredibly important leader and I think you'll get a sense in 2015 uh, during another not as big a difficulty as Brexit, but uh, there's ongoing political difficulties. Uh, Northern Ireland's been without a regional government for years now. Uh, Martin McGuinness talking about, though, his commitment to the peace process. And just contrast this with the cavalier recklessness of Boris Johnson and Joe Swinson. Well, uh, first of all, can I say that I am uh, very mindful that, that there are two families, the Davison family and the McGuigan family, who have suffered a, a grievous loss at the hand of uh, criminals. And uh, those families are my thoughts today. Our society is on a journey from conflict to peace. And we will all, within the political process, need to work to complete that journey so that violence becomes a thing of the past. It's a matter of uh, historical fact that the IRA instructed its members in 2005, and I quote, to assist the development of purely political and democratic programs through exclusively peaceful means and not engage in any other activities whatsoever. It is clear that the IRA leadership has successfully delivered on this transition from conflict to peace. Let me be absolutely clear and unequivocal. Sinn Féin is now the only organisation involved in the Republican struggle 
and in Republican activism. Republicans who support the Good Friday Agreement support the political institutions. They support the peace process and don't represent a threat to anyone in our community. There are, of course, enormous and urgent issues to be dealt with around the existence of our... So, you know, and he actually goes on to talk about austerity and other issues. The Sinn Féin is the political arm of the IRA. And, you know, Martin McGuinness was... One of the things that's amazing about him when you study him is, first of all, I mean, he became a militant when he was very young because of the extreme repression and mass violence and things like Bloody Sunday and in, in, uh, in Derry. Um, and he never denied uh, and never even apologized for any of his militancy, uh, but clearly and forthrightly chose a different path. Right. And then actually there was a lot of sort of willingness to to engage in really serious life and death diplomacy. And I I think the contrast of that type of leadership and that history and the ongoing legacy of this colonialism in contrast to the just grotesque recklessness of the Tories and of the liberal Democrats is the perfect contrast of of of, of just different ways of approaching power and you know, when you see people like Joe Swinson, who I talked about in this other clip, running around talking about political courage and the need to be serious, these people like Martin McGinnis put their life on the line from the very beginning of their careers as militants, as street fighters, as, as, as you know, gun makers, then as diplomats, then as politicians to achieve a stasis, which is not a win for them. And you're willing to throw everything away in a mediocre, airbrushed, austerity-driven, people-harming political career because you can't countenance Jeremy Corbyn having the keys to number 10 for a couple of months? You're jeopardizing all of that in addition to the food and medicine shortages? It's really disgusting. And people should think on that and get a bit more serious about the history. Do you think people who are still Lib Dem supporters are terribly reflective about things like that? No. <laughs> this is the Lib Dems are the biggest object of political disgust for me uh, right now. Um, you've just watched a Michael Brooks show video and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. 